I'm Zoe Delante Light, and the Fallout series on Amazon Prime, in my humble opinion, or not so humble if you know me well enough, is that it struck an admirable balance between satire, absurdity, and ultraviolence that epitomizes the wasteland. Lucy, the Ghoul, and Maximus are the three archetypes of characters you'll find in Fallout the Vault Dweller, Wasteland Wanderer, and Brotherhood of Steel Follower, but if you'd rather be those characters than meet them in your adventures, I am here. I've put together a character build for Lucy, the Ghoul, and Maximus, so you can recreate the chaos of Fallout on Prime in Fallout 4. This is specifically for the unmodded Fallout 4, but if you head over to Nexus and have Fallout 4 on the PC, I just know you'll be able to find mods that will do wonders for these builds, which actually might be an upcoming video. Anyway, let's jingle jangle jingle into the video. Lucy is a good person through and through, so if you're looking for a true good playthrough of Fallout 4, she's the one you're going to want to roleplay. Just remember the golden rule, do unto others as you would have done unto you and let that determine how you handle almost every interaction in the game. In Fallout 4, she's the kind to immediately go after Sean, similar to her quest to find her dad in Fallout on Prime, with her chief characteristics being curious and naive, but tenacious. Violence is a last resort for Lucy, and within reason, and where you have the choice, it should be for you too. Make sure to give her those huge, expressive eyes that she has, with a perfectly quaffed coiffure as if she's just stepped out of Vault 33. Good companions for Lucy would be either Dogmeat, the classic, or the idealistic, pragmatic Piper, possibly even Curie with her old world connections and kind personality. For Lucy, you want to roleplay naive and kind, which means diligently tending to Sanctuary, working with Preston Garvey and his settlements, and helping Nick Valentine. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. Whenever things get morally grey, or even a tinge of off-white, Lucy would either say something or get out of there. Stick with pistols and stay in your Vault 111 suit to add to the gulper out of water look. For skills, focus on intelligence, charisma, and luck. Most of Lucy's perks center around followers, helping people, or being lucky because, let's face it, she did damn well to survive in the wasteland. These are the perks I recommend and the prerequisites you need. Local leader has you establish supply lines between workshops and needs Charisma 6. Inspirational, companion does more damage in combat and can't hurt you, Charisma 8. Vans, the part the closest quest target is displayed in vats, just like we see in the show when Lucy has to deliver the head, needs intelligence 1. Scrounger has you find more ammos in containers and needs luck 2. Bloody Mess gives you 5% extra damage and enemies explode into a gory mess. It mimics the ultra ridiculous violence in Fallout on Prime, and Lucy is a bit squishy, so she could use all the extra luck she could get, and that needs luck 3. Then there's Ricochet. Enemies' ranged attacks will sometimes ricochet back and instantly kill them. The closer you are to death, the greater the chance. Lucy is the main character, so this plot armor is a fun meta thing to include for her, but Here it does go. need luck 10. <gasps> and finally, oh, Aqua Girl. Lucy takes no radiation damage from swimming and, and can pieces. breathe underwater, a reference to the ghoul's baiting strategy in the TV series, and it needs Endurance 5. Here we have the Ghoul, definitely a character blueprint for an evil-ish or anti-hero playthrough, as the Ghoul's morality is tenuous, but not without cause. The Ghoul is bent on survival above all else, so you're going to be putting yourself first every single time. Head to Good Neighbor and befriend Hancock, as he's probably the closest match to the Ghoul, both in looks and morality. In conversation, you should always be asking for caps, as the ghoul is a bounty hunter slash merc, so go to the bounty board in Diamond City to collect bounties and, and if you want yourself a less humanoid companion, get yourself dog meat, as the pair are bonded by the end of the TV series. Have tons of Radaway and Rad X in your inventory to roleplay fighting off feral ghoulification, never turn down the chem, and make the ghoul look as ghoulish as possible in the character creation scene. 
I'm talking irradiated blemishes, burns, just go wild. Go with non-auto rifles if you can and channel that cowboy aesthetic with your outfit. Nuka World DLC has some western outfits but they're a bit too clean if you ask me. The western duster from the same DLC is better Sweet. or, without the DLC, you can go more tombstone cowboy with Lorenzo's suit from the Secret of Cabot House quest. Failing those, the Minutemen general uniform found in the castle slash fort independence tunnels beneath Boston is decent. Just remember, if in doubt, be an asshole. Skills wise, agility, perception and especially endurance are your priorities. The ghoul's charisma would be low to reflect the prejudice some wastelanders have for ghouls. No matter how silver his tongue is, some people are just going to be dicks. Ready for perks? Here we go. Rifleman. Non-auto rifles do 20% more damage, needing perception too. Lead belly. Take less radiation rad. from eating and drinking, endurance too. Rad resistant. You get 10 radiation resistance, which means endurance 6. Cannibal. Eating human flesh and ass jerky significantly restores health. Endurance 8, a direct reference to that bit from the series. Ghoulish, radiation restores health. Endurance 9. Gunslinger, non-auto pistols do 20% more damage, which requires agility 1. And finally, quick hands, which lets you reload all of the guns faster, which needs agility 8. Maximus, I'd say, is the easiest character to roleplay in Fallout 4. Being a member of the Brotherhood of Steel, you want to explore factories and tech company ruins to roleplay being a Knight of the Brotherhood in search of affordable ancient technology so all the other people of the Wasteland can't have it because, God forbid. Come on, all of us know the Brotherhood of the bad guys here, right? However, Maximus is not a bad guy. Try to act chivalric and principled like Maximus's idealized knights, doing things like saving those in fights, being a lawkeeper, and seeing yourself as a savior, just like little Maximus's first impression of the Brotherhood Knights. Maximus, bless him, is trusting, so don't be afraid to be a little soft to those that you like. Companions up for grabs are obviously Paladin Dance, who you can find near Lexington, but also consider grabbing yourself either Concord's Power Armor or this set, just east of Sanctuary and pairing up with Strong. Yes, really. Maximus saved the potentially ghoulified or super mutantified, if you ask me, Thaddeus from the Brotherhood, and I think having Strong alongside a knight struggling to reconcile the Brotherhood with the realities of the Wasteland makes for a fun role-playing opportunity. When creating Maximus, focus on scars over his nose because he does keep getting punched in the face, then head towards the nearest place to get power armor. One of the earliest Brotherhood of Steel outfits you can get is in the Boston Airport ruins with only feral ghouls to contend with, or of course, fought on the Pridwin. Skills you'll want to focus on are strength, endurance, and intelligence. Intelligence gets you high-tech mods that pair well with the Brotherhood and power armor, and the others are self-explanatory as Maximus is very much a tanky build. Perks you'll want to consider are Heavy Gunner. Heavy guns do 20% more damage, which needs strength 5. Pain Train. When wearing power armor, sprinting into enemies hurts and staggers them, which is very Maximus, which needs strength 10. Toughness. You get 10 damage resist, endurance 1. Adamantium Skeleton. Limb damage reduced by 30% as you're infused with indestructible metal, which is a brotherhood thing if ever I heard one, which needs endurance seven. Intimidation, aim at any human below your level and gain a chance to pacify them. Maximus is in power armor, so this is a fun way to make his power fantasy come true. Needs charisma 10 though, so it'll take a while to get it. Science, gives you base level and rank one high tech mods, which needs intelligence six. And finally, nuclear physicist. Radiation weapons do 50% more damage and fusion cores last 25% longer, which needs Intelligence 9. This is mainly so you can stay in your power armor as long as possible with the fusion cores, but the radiation damage is pretty good too. And there you go, that is how to build Lucy, the Ghoul, and Maximus in Fallout 4. Have you watched the Fallout series on Prime yet? And if so, what did you think of it? I didn't think it would be that comedic, but I actually really liked it. Do let me know in the comments below and thanks so much for choosing to spend your time with me now. I'm going to go and return to the wasteland so I'll see you folks next time.